Hey, my name is Jay Warner Wallace, and I'm the author of Cold Case Christianity. I, I gotta tell you, if you're listening to this radio, you know you're in a good place, and I cannot endorse more highly the intellect and the passion of your host. So just enjoy this radio program. Is he a real one? Radio is the real thing. And Veda, thank you so much for doing the most important work of the kingdom. Hey, this is Greg Kokel, author of Tactics, a Game Plan for Discussing Your Christian Convictions and the Story of Reality, How the World Began, How It Ends, and Everything Important That Happens in Between. And you're listening to Is He a Real One? Of you, I don't mean to, you know, I'm just trying to understand. Ah. So it's all good, my brother. It's all good. And next, Roger, you are going to be able to go first. We will be going to Colossians 2.9. And it's a short verse, and I'm sure as you exegete it, you'll bring it more into context. And Colossians 2, 9 reads as such. For in him, in Jesus, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Go ahead, Roger. Oh, hold up, hold up. No, no, hold up. I muted you. I had you muted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Really? Go ahead now. Yeah, go ahead now. I'm sorry. We good now? You guys hear me? Okay. The Colossians do not. Hadi in alto, katoika, pantam, pleroma, teste, adate, somaticos. Literally, for in him, the whole fullness of the divinity. This is what is often not pointed out. You have an articular noun, uh, theodotois, or theodotos, rather. Uh, and it is an articular noun, so it's definitive. It has a definitive uh, tag to it. So let me go to the syntax real quick. So it starts out with a subordinate clause. I think we all know what a hadi clause is. I would imagine Mr. Shimon would know that. It, it, it's expounding upon verse 8. Then you have the prepositional phrase, in alto, literally in him. Then you have what's called a segment clause, syntactically, where two clauses of the same type are juxtaposed by a conjunction or can be in what's called an ascend, ascendetic relationship. So with that, you have, let me get straight to the prepositional phrase, pantan pleroma, or panta pleroma. Literally, all the fullness, taste theotitas, of the divinity, or of the Godhead. So I, I don't, you know, I don't really see, um, honestly, how anyone could read that and would conclude that the Jesus is a second part or a second divine person in the Godhead. Whenever he is, uh, this right here says, no, he's all the fullness. I mean, nobody's going to read that, guys, and if they don't know a thing about the Bible and, and read that and say, oh, okay, there must be a, a trinity. There must be two, three persons in the Godhead. Nobody would do that. But yet, uh, and again, I'm not trying to be ugly. I hope I'm not coming across that way. But yet, that is exactly what a Trinitarians do. They they say, well, this is just saying he's divine. It's just saying he's Godhood, not Godhead. And so... Um, but but it is an articular noun, theatetos, and if you know anything about Greek, it's, it's actually an attributive article. It is attributing to it definitiveness. Definitively, there is one person in the Godhead, and he is Jesus Christ, because in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Just it, it, It's just, it shatters Trinitarianism. Uh, let's see, a Greek word for pleroma, bower. Uh, page 672, it denotes the full measure of divinity. Um, thought, let's see. Okay, so, okay, well, that's it. I'll just stop right there. All I'll right. stop. All right, Sam, go ahead and respond. Yeah, I, well, again, I don't want to take person because I actually enjoy his personality. I actually like Mr. Perkins. He's very animated, emotional like me, and I enjoy that. So don't take anything personal I say, but uh, I have to laugh again because did you notice the bait and switch again? He said that it means... The the articular <clears throat> shows it's definitive, definitively, and then he equates theodotos with person. Did you catch it? So that definitively he is the person. No, that's not what theodotos means. And this is why I'm kind of shocked because you say you're studying Greek grammar and syntax, syntax and exegesis and you're appealing to lexicons. Theodotos, here, I'm going to give you Thayer's Greek lexicon, which you know, you know this because it's been used. I'm sure by other Trinitarians, because I was told you've debated James White, even though I didn't see the debate. It comes from Theotes. Here's how it's defined, uh, defined. Deity, the state of being God. Godhead, which you just decried. Godhead, right? Godhood, because Godhead is simply, another way of saying Godhood, like <clears throat> uh, manhood. 
And then it says divinity as essence, difference from quality or attribute. That's all the text is saying. It's saying that Jesus possesses the absolute fullness of that which makes God God, the essence and all its essential properties, which Trinitarian denies it. But you equated Theodotos with a singular person again, and I'm going to challenge you. Quote, one single Greek lexical source or a Greek scholar, doesn't even have to be Trinitarian, cite them to say that Theodotos means the person of God, meaning the one person of God, as opposed to the essence and the essential characteristics of God. And I'm just going to stick to Colossians 2, 9, because if we go to Colossians 1, 13 to 20, we're going to have a field day refuting oneness and proving the triunity of God. But I'm going to just stick to Colossians 2, 9. So here's my challenge to you. You say you know Greek exegesis, and you're trying to exegete in order to give the impression that you know the Greek, and I'm sorry to say you don't. So quit, quote, one single Greek lexicon, one single Greek scholar that says Theodotos means person, singular, who is God, as opposed to the essence and the essential characteristics of deity. Quote the source. Let me hear it. What's the evidence? Your time. Go ahead, Mr. Perkins. My turn. Okay. Number one, yeah, I, I am taking uh, second year Greek, and that's exactly why I make the arguments that I make. From what I've seen in Mr. Shamoon's handling of original languages, I, I would guess that he's not had a, a lick of original formalistic university training. That's why he keeps making the mistakes that he's making. So regarding the term Godhead, Theodotos, or Tos here, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong. I got to do it right now, but whenever I hand it back over to you, it sounds like Mr. Shamoon is saying that that the term Godhead does not refer to the what he would call the divine persons of the Trinity. I know you made that argument last week with Mr. Hedgeman whenever he brought it up. And yet the irony is the next day I looked on your Facebook thing and guess what you had there? You have an article on your Facebook link where you're talking about, I think it was William Lane Craig, if I'm not mistaken, and how that he did, didn't agree with the Nicene understanding of the three divine persons in the Godhead. So now, whenever we have a verse that clearly refutes, yes, I hope we do go to Colossians 1, by the way, that clearly refutes uh, uh, Trinitarianism, now Mr. Shamoon has to wiggle a little bit and has to get out of it, whereas when he's arguing for Trinity and he's not paying attention to it and he's not trying to protect his religious tradition, then he says, that, oh, well, that's referring to the persons of the Trinity. But then when we have a verse that says all the fullness of the divinity, it's an articular uh, divinity. Uh, you didn't address that. It's an articular uh, divinity that I would like you to say something about, at least, a tributive article. And so it's definiteness. Anybody that's had a half a semester of Greek knows that you have, when you have an article prior to the noun, you have an articular noun, and therefore it's specific specificity. And so... Um, what else? What other argument did he use? I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, oh, so far as lexicons, um, you know, it, we do not, I'm not saying that we agree with every single phrase that is used in a lexicon. I use that uh, incidentally. Uh, however, no more than you would agree with everything Thayer said, whom you know was a Unitarian. No more than you would agree with the theology of the uh, paraphrase, what is it, the Targum. Though they were Jews, they denied your Trinity doctrine. So if, if you're going to charge me, okay, so if you're going to charge me with that, you need to take your own medicine because you do the same thing. We ready? Yes, sir. All right. Notice the bait and switch again. Notice he keeps doing it. Notice what he just did. He appealed to the Greek and saying the definite, you know, it's definite. And therefore, anyone who knows Greek would understand it's referring to the divinity. Well, I never said it doesn't refer to the deity. My question is, what does the deity mean? And the reason why he can't quote the lexicons to support his position, because no lexicon, no Greek scholar makes the point he did. He's butchering the Greek. So I'm going to reissue my challenge. Quote the Greek authorities that know it's definitive. Because the article is there before Theodotos. It's taste Theodotos. Quote any Greek scholar, whether Unitarian or Trinitarian, that made the argument you just did. Because it's definite, it has to mean a person. And notice what you did again, the bait and switch. Who's talking about Thayer's Unitarianism? Thayer's Unitarianism is one thing. I'm talking about his comments on the Greek terms. You can be an atheist and still 
know what the Greek terms mean. So I like this bait and switch tactic, but it's not getting you far. And you did it with my own words. You quoted something I said on Facebook where I'm using Godhead in a different sense from the way the King James translators used it. When the King James translators translated Colossians 2.9 as Godhead, they meant the same thing as manhood, godhood, that which makes you God, like manhood is that which makes you man. Now, here's what's ironic. You've been appealing to the Greek, but now you abandon the Greek and you went to the English Godhead to prove. You see, you believe the God is the Trinity. So the fullness of the Trinity is in him. So what do you want me to do? You want me to stick with English? Abandon the Greek. You want the Greek? It destroys your position. Because the Greek word theodotos does not mean the persons or person of the Godhead. It simply means the divine essence and its essential characteristics, which is why you can't quote a lexical source or a Greek scholar, even an atheist, that agrees with you. So the game is over. Oneness is over. The Trinity lives. Glory to Jesus. All right, Mr. Perkins, you get a chance to respond to that, and you, you'll be able to go two more times. So go ahead and respond hey. to Sam. You. Me? You no, right. he, he started, though, so he's got the last word. Yeah, I, I, was say, I was telling Mr. Perkins he has two more times. So you can go ahead. Sam will respond, and then you have one more opportunity. Oh, oh okay. okay. I'm sorry. I, I, we're all sorry about that. Good. Well, so, so the it deal be- is, I, well, regarding the, the my term, my expression about the Godhead, I'm pointing out Mr. Shamoon's double standards. And so far as quoting a lexicon, apparently Mr. Shamoon's never heard of the logical fallacy argumentum ad populum. Because when you appeal to the populace for your doctrine, we just always we just will always turn our collar around and go join up with Roman Catholics. We just will join up if we're in the Eastern world, go join Islam. Because if you're appealing to the populace and what they believe, then we're really in a bind. So I have not looked at every single lexicon, but I don't need the lexicon. The lex- the Greek grammar and the syntax. I've already alluded to the syntax. I, I can do it again. Uh, if you're perhaps not hearing me, it's an attributive article. Greek demands that when you have an attributive demar- uh, um, article prior to the noun, it is specificity. It's saying the divinity, all the fullness of the deity. I know you don't like that because it refutes your, your Trinitarianism. However, you have the article there, and I was pointing out your your double standards regarding the term Godhead. Last week, you said, well, it don't mean the persons of the Trinity. And then the next night, you post something <laughs> on your Facebook that says it's the persons of the Trinity. So it sounds to me like you need to make up your mind. And regarding taking Greek and Hebrew, yes, this is exactly the point. That is why I reject the doctrine of the Trinity. I am forced to, if I'm going to be honest with the original languages, I want to be saved. And I want them to hear me to be saved as well. I have to, if I'm going to be honest with the inspired data. Back over to you. 